Today I'm going to show you how to use InfoPath to create forms for your SharePoint based website. InfoPath is a great tool for designing, distributing, filling, and submitting electronic forms containing structured data. It is a member of the Microsoft Office product family. You can use this versatile program for a variety of tasks in your workplace. Electronic forms such as expense reports, time cards, surveys, insurance forms, order forms, etc. can all be made quickly and easily with this software. For this demonstration I will make an order form for a restaurant but you can use what I will show you in this video for almost anything you want to do in InfoPath. To begin create a new blank form. So I'm going to title this order form and let's start by adding some columns. So first for bread I want a drop down list. Controls op section is where you select all your objects and input options. So for this we want a drop down list and then we right click it and click drop down list properties. From here we can uh, choose the uh, options. So I want to make it so that it cannot be blank because you can't make a sandwich without bread. And now I'm going to have white bread. Whole wheat bread. Italian bread. And that's enough for this demonstration. So you can make other changes such as modifying the size of the list. But for now we'll just leave it as is. And then we'll have a similar drop down menu for meat. that it's easier later. And this one also cannot be blank. And let's have tuna chicken and roast beef beef as the options. And then we also want a uh, none option, vegetarian. But by default, I want it to have no meat. So what you do is you click and hit set default, apply. And now it automatically has none in there without you having to change anything. So if we go in preview, this is what our form looks like right now. And you see this asterisk is on this because it cannot be blank. It's on here, but this is already defaulted to none, so it won't be blank. And now for toppings. Now toppings, a drop down will not work because you want to be able to have more than one topping. So for this, we're going to have multi selection box. And now we change that properties. This we want to be able to be blank because you may not want any toppings. Now we can add lettuce. size now let's go and check the preview again as you can see I can now check whichever ones I want so 
that's about all we need for the sandwich itself. But now, say I want it delivered. For this, we will use a uh, checkbox. And then write delivery. And edit this, rename it, over. And that's it. But if you're delivering, you're then I want the address. So what we'll do is then have a text box to type the address into. string cannot be blank because if they order a delivery and there's no address where do we send it apply okay so now we're good now if we hit preview we can select bread select meat select toppings if we want we can get a delivery and type the address but here's the problem. What if we don't want it delivered? And this will be left blank, but it cannot be blank. So what you do is, and also you don't really need that at all if you're not getting delivery, so what you do is you highlight the cells, change control, make it a repeating table. And now, right now it's fine. We gotta edit the routine table properties. We do not want users to be able to modify it, so uncheck that. And hit apply. And now we need a rule. So manage rule. Find the group that is this, and then make a new rule formatting condition when deliver is, is false. We want to hide this. Okay, so now we hit preview, and it's not there, but when we hit deliver, it appears. But just because it's hidden doesn't mean it's not there, and this still requires something to be in there, and we want it to require something. So now you have to uh, add a rule specifically to the text box that is the same as the old rule. So when deliver is false, hide this controller, but also disable this. And now, when this is in checked, this doesn't exist. So we won't get an error when we try to submit with the asterisk. And now, to make our table look nicer when it's on, let's have an, a uh, submit button. So you just create submit, and then you do submit options. You can also change the label. You can say for our case we can make it order instead of submit. Then submit options. Allow you to submit this form. And then you can select where the data gets sent. So it could be sent to an email address, a SharePoint document, a web service hosting environment, a connection from a data connection library.
So say you want to send it to an email, you just hit add, type in the email address. In this case, we're using SharePoint, so SharePoint document library add, add the URL. The button is there. If you hit that when it's set up, it will submit the form.